With Q3 of 2023 in the rearview mirror, it's time to take a step back and look at what's been going on in the Wilton, Connecticut real estate market. We'll take a look at where the market's been and I'm going to give you some valuable advice on how to approach the market in the upcoming months, whether you're a prospective buyer or a seller. So sit back, grab a coffee, and let's explore the Wilton market. Hi, my name is Charlie Vinci. I am a former construction business owner turned real estate agent, and my family's been right here in Connecticut's Gold Coast for five generations. Buyers, you're going to keep from missing opportunities and avoid overpaying with my approach. Sellers, you'll net the most money with my experience flipping homes for a profit and by exposing your home to more buyers via this channel. Call me when you're ready to buy or sell. In Q3 in Wilton, there were 79 closed sales. Last year in the same time frame, there were 93 closed sales, and in 2021, there were 141 sales in Q3. Taking a look at the five-year trend, you can see prior to COVID, we typically sold between 81 and 86 homes in Q3, so 79 isn't too bad. Let's take a look at the number of pending sales to see how they're doing. When Q3 ended, there were 72 sales pending. Last year, there were 78, and in 2021, there were 114 sales pending at the end of Q3. Let's take a look at the five-year trend. So prior to COVID, we ranged between 71 and 74 pending sales. Some people have seen this data and thought that it meant the market was softening, but the story's bigger than that. Let's take a look at the other data to see what I mean. The median seller in Q3 received a whopping 105.4% of their list price. In 2022, the median seller in Q3 received 103.4% of their list price, and in 2021, it was 101.8%. As you can see in the years of 2018 to 2020, this number ranged between 96 and 99% roughly. So 105.4% is strong from a historical perspective. The median's the number in the middle of the pack, and in order for half of the sellers to get 105.4% or more of their list price, the market has got to be hot. This is happening because many new listings that are appropriately priced, and that's the key, are still getting multiple offers, usually on the first weekend. If you're a buyer, stay tuned because I have some good news for you. But let's quickly finish up the other data so you can see what I'm talking about. In Wilton in Q3, it took the median seller 23 days to sell their home. Last year, it took 29 days. And back in 2021, it took the median seller 39 days to find a buyer. Take a look at the five-year trend to see how this stacks up compared to the years of 2018 to 2020. So homes are selling a bit quicker than last year. Notice the spike in the number of days on market that typically precedes Q3. You may be able to take advantage of this. More about that in a moment. As you can see from this graph, there were 40 homes for sale at the end of Q3 in Wilton. This number has been declining over the past few years with 60 homes for sale at the end of Q3 in 22 and 91 at the end of Q3 in 2021. Take a look at the five-year trend. If you want to get an idea of what your home's worth, you can run an instant valuation at the link below. You may like ours better than some of the others out there if you'd like periodic updates as the price changes over time. Next, let's look at the months of supply graph. In theory, if we didn't get any new homes to sell, we have enough inventory in Wilton to last us another two months. In both 22 and 2021, there were 2.3 months of supply at the end of Q3. Take a look at the five-year trend. If you're thinking of selling and you'd like to time the market to garner the highest possible price, call me. I'd be happy to have a strategy session or answer any of your questions. In Q3 in Wilton, the median sales price was just over a million dollars. Last year's median was 970,000 and the median sales price in 2021 was 942,000 in Q3. Take a look at the five-year trend. Let's talk about navigating the upcoming market. First buyers, and then I'll address the sellers. Buyers, you should be aware that the quantity of new listings will fall off sometime in October. While you might be thinking, man, inventory is already low, there is a silver lining. With the new listing quantity decreasing, other buyers begin to focus on the holidays and competition will lessen. The other great news is that historically, the best deals of the year have been had when you get your offer accepted in November and December. 
So here's my advice if you want the best values of the year. Stay focused on your listing alerts, price changes, and back on market listings and get out to them quickly. These can be great opportunities, but don't stop there. Scour the old listings too. Old listings can be a great value because prices are rising, but everyone thinks they must be overpriced because they haven't sold and they've been on the market yet. Go see these homes and make reasonable offers. You may be surprised at what the seller's willing to accommodate. If you're working with me or planning to, I'd suggest that you call me for a strategy session so you can make the most of this opportunity over the next few months. Sellers, you must be thinking, well, I guess I'll list in the spring then. And well, if you want top dollar and you can wait, you're probably better off. But strategically speaking, January may be a better play because buyers tend to come back to the market in January with very little inventory to choose from. In truth, market timing is a strategic play and I like to work with my sellers to time the market so that they get the most money possible. Call me when you're ready to buy or sell. Wait, I have one more option for you. If you're on your computer or watching on TV, whip out your phone and scan this QR code. It will bring you right to the page on our site related to the video.